Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got another NVMe external solid state drive to check out. This one is from the folks at Micron. This is the Crucial X8 and it's available in a, a 500 gigabyte version and this one terabyte version. This is an NVMe USB type C drive and these start at around $130 for the lower capacity and $189 for this solid state terabyte version. And what we're going to do in this review is take a closer look at the hardware and also do some benchmarks to see how it performs. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this did come in free of charge from Micron. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying to make this video, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, there isn't much to talk about because all you got here is a single port. Uh, this is a USB Type-C port, and this supports the faster USB Gen 2 spec. So you get a maximum of 10 gigabits per second, although the actual speed will be much lower than that. Uh, this will also, though, connect up with a standard uh, USB connector. And what they give you in the box here is a single cable and an adapter that goes on the end of it to work with the uh, older USB ports you might encounter. Uh, just note though, you got to make sure you get the cable connected exactly the way you see here. They've keyed it so you can't have it go in the wrong way, but I guess if you forced it enough, you could. I always get nervous when they include these things because there are some risks involved uh, with getting this adapter on the wrong way. Uh, so just make sure everything lines up if you are going to use this in an older USB-A port. Uh, the other option would be to get a cable that uh, has USB-C on one end and USB-A on the other. So that's my only gripe here with the included stuff. Uh, Micron's not the only company that does this kind of stuff. WD does this as well. Uh, so just be careful with the cable, but otherwise uh, it should perform just fine. Uh, it's metal, so it's got a very nice build to it. It's got these two ends here that are rubberized to kind of uh, diminish perhaps any impacts that might occur there. And again, this is completely solid state. There are no moving parts inside. So these drives work very well if you're often uh, downloading photos or video on the go, because if you happen to drop this, uh, there's very uh, low likelihoods of data loss if this has an impact, just because there's no delicate parts inside that can get damaged. Uh, SSDs cost more uh, than standard traditional spinning disks, but again, you get that ruggedness and the casing here feels like it should keep everything inside pretty well protected. Uh, it is using an NVMe drive. Uh, we found that those are much faster than some of the other solid state drives we've looked at over the last two years or so, but we're gonna put it to the test now and see exactly how fast this drive is. Let's get my Mac hooked up here and have a look. All right, so we've got the drive now connected up to my MacBook Pro's USB-C port, and let's have a look at the overall speed. As you can see here, we're uh, doing about 900 megabytes per second on writes, and we're reading at about 930 megabytes per second. Uh, now, I have seen faster drives out there, uh, primarily ones that are connecting up via Thunderbolt, but this isn't bad for a USB-C drive, and this test has now been running for a few minutes uh, because I'm often eager to see if we see reductions in overall write performance, and it looks like it's been able to keep itself hovering in this 900 megabyte per second territory pretty consistently as this test is running here. So that's a very good sign that you'll have uh, a good amount of reliable write bandwidth that you can use for video capturing and whatnot. So this is a good result here. Again, you could probably get something faster, but I think for what most people would use this drive for, this is more than adequate, especially if you're just dumping a couple of video files off your camera or something along those lines. This is a very good uh, speed test here, and I am uh, quite pleased with it. So that is a good thing. And this is one of the advantages that you get with a solid state drive is that you get ruggedness and performance. And it looks like this one is performing very consistently. Now we also ran the crystal disc mark test on my Windows PC upstairs. That test looks at random reads and writes, basically simulating what you might experience running a game or maybe loading an operating system, anything where you're not sequentially reading and writing back and forth. 
And there we saw some pretty good results as well. So if you take a look at the third result down there, the 4KIB Q32T1, uh, that is a multi-threaded random read and write test. And there we were getting about 176 megabytes on the reads and 171 megabytes on the writes. That's very good for a USB-C drive at this price point. Uh, the single threaded test there at the bottom was around 40 megabytes per second in both directions, give or take, and that's also good and consistent with other USB-C drives we've looked at. Uh, we've seen much better performance out of Thunderbolt drives, but of course that would require a computer with a Thunderbolt port on board. But for USB-C, this is performing just fine for what I expected to see out of it, and it's performing consistently, which is very important and something we don't always see out of these new NVMe drives. So all in, uh, decent performance here, and I think it will do well both for video capture and video editing, but also possibly being used as a game drive as well. So good deal all around here. Uh, just note that the results we're getting on these tests were both done on PCs that have USB-C Gen 2 ports that can support the full bandwidth uh, of, the of the drive here. Uh, if you are plugging it into a USB 3.0 port, you will see lower performance. And also, not all USB-C ports are created equal. So some ports might look the same as what I have here on my MacBook, but they'll actually perform at the slower Gen 1 speed. And also, the type of cable you pick to pair with your drive is important to know about as well. So this is a Gen 2 cable that's plugged in, and therefore we're getting the Gen 2 speeds. But if you decide to go with another cable, make sure that it is a Gen 2 cable, otherwise you'll be running at the lower USB speeds. USB-C is never an easy thing to figure out. The good news is the cable that comes in the box will work just fine, and just make sure you pick the right cable and understand what your computer has on it so that you can set your expectations accordingly. All in, though, it's a great drive here, a good value. Uh, seems to be pretty rugged as well, and we're probably going to be using this as another one of our edit drives here on the channel. So I've got no problems recommending this one. It's got a three-year warranty on it as well, and I believe Micron makes the chips inside of this too, so they kind of run the whole stack here uh, for this product. So altogether, the X8 is something I can recommend, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.